so your cam mat has a leak. But don't stress, it's an easy fix and I'm going to show you how to do it. Hit it. Hey guys, it's Lauren from Snowies here. Today, I have with me a single air mattress. Now, we know it's got a slow leak in it somewhere and we need to find it and repair it. And it's a really common question that we get here at Snowies. A lot of people are daunted by the prospect of locating and repairing a leak. The process will be the same, not just for air mattresses, but also with your self-inflating mats as well. So I'm gonna take you through the process. All right, so a couple of things you're gonna need to um, do your puncture location and repair is a spray bottle with a combination of soap and water. Common dish washing liquid works the best in my opinion. Just gonna mix it in this bottle and that will help you locate the leak. We're gonna have some paper towel to dry it all off. Once we've found the leak, we're gonna have a texture to mark the location of the leak. And last but not least, we're gonna have a repair kit. Now, most mattresses will come with their own repair kit like this one does here, which I'll be using today. But if for some reason you've misplaced yours or it's already been used up, there's a couple of uh, different options that we've got. So you can get, you know, your generic air mattress kits that ha also have a velour patch for any punctures on the top of the mattress. Um, you've got this Thermarest repair kit, which does uh, Thermarest mattresses. It's also like a nice vinyl patch for any other uh, self-inflating mats, like hiking self-inflating mats as well. Cedar to Summer also do a repair kit for their ultra lightweight air sprung cell hiking mats. And another couple of generic options we have is um, your Gear Aid field repair kit, which has a lot of applications, as well as this Gear Aid seam grip, which I think personally is a must have for anybody's camp kit. It has such a broad application of uses in emergency situations, um, your wet weather gear, even your tent flies. It's also excellent to use with mattresses in a, a small spot leak or even really large tears a lot of people think mattress is written off not necessarily so with a bit of seam grip extra nylon fabric or a large piece of vinyl fabric you can um, definitely sort your gear out so before we locate the leak we've got to pump air mattress up so we're going to go and do that now okay so our mattress is fully pumped up now i recommend you put a bit more air in it than you usually would because if your puncture is minuscule you want to make sure there's enough air pressure behind it to force air out through it now once your mattress is pumped up you grab your spray bottle um, I've already got water in this one but we're going to put in some detergent as well screw the lid back on give us a bit of a shake and now we're going to uh, work in a system of spraying all surfaces of the mattress until the leak is located so the reason we start off with spraying the bottom is because it is the most common location for punctures of your mattress and another option that people um, prefer is to submerge it in a bath not a lot of people have a bath at their place these days but if you do and that's convenient for you you can also do it that way. I personally like this one. It's a bit less messier and easier to do it. Oh, look, here we go. We've got these bubbles here and uh, we found our leak. We give it a bit, we'll push on the mattress just to be sure that that's where we've got it coming through. Ah, uh, yes, it is. Okay, so the next spot we're gonna do is grab our, um, a bit of paper towel or towel, or whatever you've got to dry it off. Make sure you've also got your Sharpie here because we don't wanna lose spot of that location. We wanna make it really, really dry and then get your Sharpie ready. And what we're gonna do is mark the spot of that puncture so we don't lose it. One thing I do wanna talk about while I'm just drying this off here, ready for the patch, is uh, when it comes to punctures and warranties on mattresses. So generally punctures won't be covered by warranty. So it is important to look after the space around you. However, when you are locating your leak, if you are finding that it is coming from any of the weld spots or any of the seams or even around the valve itself, get in contact with us if it is within the warranty period and we'll give you advice on what your next step will be. All right, so my mattress is nice and clean and dry. We're ready for the patch. This is the kit that came with the mattress. So we've got two different kinds here, the velour piece, which is for the top side of the mattress, and this other piece here, which will suit the underside um, or the edges of the mattress. Now we recommend not going smaller than, you know, 20 cent piece, a 50 cent piece would be ideal. However, I'm actually gonna stick to the 20 cent piece size today, which will give me um, a bit of spare stuff left over in an emergency for the next time round. We're going to slowly just give me a bit of a guide. 
and cut this around like this. Now the really important thing that um, you need to take into consideration is to make sure that all your edges are rounded off. If you've got any corners, if it's in a square rectangular shape, those edges are gonna be really prone to being caught on clothing or the edge of your tent or something like that. And you don't wanna rip your puncture patch off. So once we've cut this repair patch, the next step is to deflate the mattress. So one of the reasons why we need to fully deflate our mattress before we do the repair is whilst the mattress itself is still under pressure, even if you're applying the glue in the patch, there's still going to be air trying to force its way out. So it's actually going to um, completely undermine the repair job that you're doing. Squeeze as much air out as we can. Just make sure that there's no air pressure left in the mattress. And now we're going to relocate our marked puncture spot. Where, ah, here we go. All right. I'm just going to grab some more paper towel and we're going to thoroughly dry off the area again. So once your area is nice and dry, the next step is to apply glue to your spot. We're going to put it straight onto the mattress itself. Now you don't need to be too careful with the glue. If anything, you should apply it quite liberally because it, too much glue will dry. Not enough glue will uh, leave your patch possibly not functional. So once we've got the glue on, we're going to leave it sit for about one to two minutes just to allow it to dry off a little bit and become tacky. So we know the patch is really being stuck on there. All right, so once the glue's had a minute or two to sort of go a bit tacky, we're going to stick the patch on and put a little bit of pressure just to make sure that all the edges are sealed like so. Ideally, you're going to want your patch to sit to dry for about 24 hours. However, if you're out camping, even though it's the last thing you're gonna wanna do the morning after you've had a rough night's sleep on a flat mattress, it's best to get it done early and that way it'll have the whole day's worth of drying time before you're gonna reinflate your mat to have a sleep that night. Uh, but for the purposes of this video, we're just gonna go and have a inflate now and just show you how that patch is holding up. So with a couple of household items and a repair kit, that's our puncture taken care of and your mat will see you through some peaceful sleep for all your adventures to come. You can find some repair kits for a whole range of applications at snowies.com.au. If you found this video helpful, give us a like. If you've got any questions or comments, even share your experience of repairing your own mat, any extra tips, chuck them below. You can head here to subscribe or here for more helpful videos. Catch you later, Snowy's fam.